Okay, I am here for geography and we are looking at our seven continents and what continent are we on right now? We are on North America. We are kind of in the middle of North America and that is where we have the United States. What was down here? Mexico and what's up here? Canada and in the middle is us, the United States. So we have our picture of the states here and we've been to several places. Let's see, that's not the one. That's the one I'm gonna give you next week. Here's the one with our dots of the states that we have visited. So you need to get your uh, snack and your drink because we're fixing to go on a plane ride. And we are going to travel to Pennsylvania. So I am going to mark it on the map with a light purple dot. Pennsylvania is a rectangle, almost a perfect rectangle. And it's right below New York. Do you see it? Pennsylvania, that light purple dark. The blue one is New York, the light blue, and the light purple is Pennsylvania. And what we are going to see today is the Liberty Bell. So let's count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and take off. All right, I'm going to turn on my share screen and shrink myself down and let's see I'm going to click on this and the first place we're going to go is we are going to see the Liberty Bell all right what things do you notice about the Liberty Bell right off you might notice the color you might notice that it's got a huge crack where do you think that crack came from you think it got shot at or bombed or rain well, we're going to find out, but it's in Pennsylvania. In our little book, get your little book out. It tells you the Liberty Bell is located in Philadelphia. That's the city. Pennsylvania is the state. Liberty Bell was used to call lawmakers to Independence Hall. They would ring the bell when they wanted them to come. So, you know, they didn't have phones in those days, so they had to have a way to communicate. So they would ring the bell. All right, let's go to this. Now this is a video that I found and it is all about American symbols but it had a section on Liberty Bell and it was the most interesting one I could find so I'm sorry if you think it's boring but let's just listen and we'll get a few facts and we'll write them down on our book. Okay, You can write them down as we go or you can just wait to see which ones I want to pull out after we are done. Alright so this one, this part was about the American flag. Alright here we go. That's a bell ringing. Ah, a ringy dingy. Did someone ring for me? This special bell rings for all of us. It's the Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell was rung on July 8, 1776, to summon everyone to come to Independence Hall in Philadelphia. What happened in 1776? That was the signing of the Declaration of Independence. All of our people, not all of our people, but the part that made the United States, most of them came from England. And so we belonged to England and the goods we had to make had to go back to England. Well, the American people decided that we could function as a country by ourselves, and they declared ourselves independent from England. And that's a whole nother study, but it is an important study that we're not going to get into right now. But they declared that we were a country and it's called, the, they wrote a document and it was called Declaration of Independence. And it was here in Philadelphia Hall. And this is where the Liberty Bell was, so listen up. ...to hear the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence. The bell was originally ordered to celebrate the 50-year anniversary of a special document to the people in Pennsylvania. It was written by William Penn. Religious freedom was very important to William Penn. So the... Okay, so William Penn was a man who came to America before we were a country. We still belong to England, but the reason he came was because he wanted religious freedom. He wanted the freedom to worship how he believed he should worship. And so he had a Bible verse put on this bell, so be listening for the Bible verse. The assembly inscribed this line. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. <laughs> so he read it in the King James, so it's a little hard to understand. He said proclaim, that just means shout it out liberty to all inhabitants that means all the people who live here shout out liberty to all the people who live here 
Okay, so he wanted everybody to know when they heard this bell, you are free. And this bell is reminding you that you are free. This is from the Bible, and it means that every time the bell rings, it is announcing our freedoms to everyone who hears it ring. When they were first testing the bell, it cracked. Two Philadelphia men, John Pass and John Stowe, were given the cracked bell to melt down and recast. They added more They're comfort. melting the bell down right there. But then it didn't sound right. So they broke it up and recast it again. They tried to fix the crack twice. But later, the crack appeared again. Still, it was sturdy enough to ring from the bell tower in Independence Hall over many years. During the Revolutionary War, they took the bell down and hid it so the Brit... Okay, so what happened is once we declared our independence, there was a war and uh, the British came over and they tried to say, no, you can't be your own country. You have to be our country. And uh, we fought against them and we won. But they hid the bell because they didn't want the British to melt it down and make bullets with it. British wouldn't melt it into cannonballs. After the war, it summoned the government representatives to meet when Philadelphia was the capital. It called people out to vote. And it rang out to celebrate Washington's birthday and the 4th of July. Later, the Liberty Bell was taken to cities throughout our country to proclaim liberty. Okay, let's look at this picture. Do you think this was a, a few months ago? A few years ago? Or many years ago? One way you can tell is look how the people are dressed. You see, do you see people dressed like this anymore? This was many years ago, and they took the Liberty Bell around the United States, and everybody in our country was proud to be an American in these days. And they were proud of freedom. And I think as the years pass, we've kind of forgotten those things. So I want y'all to think about that. It's important to have freedom. It's important to be able to do what you feel is right. And so that is what the Liberty Bell stands for. That's what America is supposed to stand for. And that's why I keep saying we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for those freedoms to be preserved. It stands for America's independence. Some cities have even made copies of it so freedom can ring in their state. The last time it was rung loud was on Washington's birthday in 1846. That day, the crack got larger and the bell was no longer safe to ring. Today, it's displayed in the Liberty Bell Pavilion in Philadelphia. Still, Today, people every can year go on the 4th of July, the bell is tapped and thousands of bells across the country are rung to celebrate our freedom. All right, so it said on the 4th of July, you may have not known what that holiday was all about, but the 4th of July is to celebrate our freedom. And so that's why everybody dresses up with red, white, and blue. Girls, can y'all talk slightly? Girls. Hmm? Somebody reset the internet? I'm videoing. <laughs> Sorry. And so that is what the 4th of July is about. It's about our freedoms and celebrating those freedoms because we do it... Uh, when the Declaration of Independence was signed. All right, so I want to talk about some of the things we learned about the Liberty Bell. Do you know how many times it was made? It was made three times. So write down three times. Okay? All right, it has a Bible verse on it. And the Bible verse says, Proclaim... You don't have to write this down. Proclaim liberty... To, I think it says proclaim freedom. Liberty and freedom mean the same thing. Proclaim liberty to the inhabitants or to the people. You do not have to write this down, but I'm going to write it down. Inhabitants. Because I want you to know that our country used to believe in using Bible verses. All right? So proclaim liberty to the inhabitants. They wanted everybody to know that they were free. And when was the last time it was wrong? I want you to write this down. George... Washington's Mama's helped him spell this. Oops, I ran into my three times. Let me erase that. George Washington's birthday. That's a long sentence. I had to move my three times. All right, George Washington's 
birthday. Okay, so that was the last time it was wrong. And it got a crack in it, not on that day. It had already cracked. And the people who made it, they just weren't experienced enough to know how to mix the metals properly so that it wouldn't crack. And they said, I don't, on another video I watched, it said when they rang the bell, it did not sound good because the crack was not as big as it is right there in our picture. But it would just vibrate against each other. The sides would rub and it would make a buzzy noise. And so it really didn't have a nice tone. But it has a very important meaning for our country. Okay, that is our man-made uh, natural uh, man-made wonder we're going to look at. And we are now going to get in the plane. And we are going to travel all the way down. Let me get my green marker. We are going to go to the state of Florida. And I want to show you where Florida is. I'll tell you what, let me get off my share screen. All right, look. Florida, way down here. And we're going to go to a place called the Everglades. Okay? It's called the Everglades. Do you know what the Everglades are? All right, well, you're in for a treat. Um, right here, this is a picture of what the Everglades look like. It is water and grass and swamp. And you may think, how is that beautiful? Look at this. Gage, you're going to like this. Well, it's not going to pull it up. My internet is not working really great. All right, let me go over here. Let's see if we can play this. This is with a ranger. A ranger is a people who talk to us about where they work and they take care of it. All right. There's so many great opportunities here in this Everglades is the National Ranger. Park. At Shark Valley, it is a paved pathway, very friendly for strollers with tons of wildlife. Look at those just animals. Feet away Look from at them. that. A, an alligator is right beside them. And then, of course, you can enjoy the park with a ranger led program. They have a tour guide. Look, they are going through the water. Standing knee deep or thigh deep in a cypress stone is by far my most favorite thing and my most favorite place. There's a lot Everglades. of knee deep water in the Everglades. Look at it. The great thing of Everglades National Park is that you can see it from There's many an owl. different perspectives. You can see the freshwater marshes, but you can also see the saltwater estuaries. All right, I want to talk to you all about that. Look at this. Down here where Florida is, this is an ocean. An ocean has salt water, but on land, we have fresh water. I don't know why that is, but that's the way it is. So in the Everglades, you can have a salt marsh or a freshwater marsh, depending on what part of the Everglades you're in. It's really strange. You can board a slow moving boat and you have the opportunity to see the mango estuary where you have dolphins see, and this you is have a saltwater one. wading birds or um, the endangered manatee. And then in the freshwater you have alligators and some crocodiles. They have big wide open water where you can go fast. This is a special kind of boat that goes through the swamp. There's something mystical and magical. I mean, there's just, oh, it, it wants to tell a story. It's just beautiful. <laughs> I can shrink this down and I'm going to pause it. It's got to finish this little circle before I can pause it. All right, so that was neat. I did not know that about the Everglades. So what do you think the Everglades are most famous for? I would say they're famous for two things. What do you think they're famous for? Well, I think they're famous for all of the water and most of it is not deep water. That's why it's called the Everglades. 
It has grasses and trees growing up in it, and they have made special boats that can travel, and they don't have to be deep waters. Most boats need deep waters or they'll get stuck. But these boats can go across that shallow water. You can wade in that water. But the other famous thing is all of the wildlife. Can you name some of the things that we saw? I know Gage saw some. There's alligators. Leon, what did you see? Makai and Braylon, did you see anything? Lizards, owls. Uh, I saw wading birds, which are storks and pelicans. So there's just all kind of things. In the saltwater places, there were dolphins and sea manatees. And it's just unbelievable to me. And some of the places in the Everglades are only freshwater. And so they have like the alligators and the crocodiles. So it's pretty neat. And that is a God-made place. So we visited Florida and Pennsylvania today. And I am just so excited taking this journey with you. And this is all that we have for today. And we are going to do science next. So I will be back in a minute.